Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the Fracture Photoshop action. So I'm going to take this photo here, I'm going to use the action to recreate this design. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to work through two more examples, um, just so you get really familiar with how the action works and um, what all the layers do and how you customise uh, the design really fast, okay? So let me just, I'll just open up some examples that I've got um, of this action. So I'll go through, you know, how to change up all the colours, it's really simple. Alright, I'll just close this down. And let's start from scratch. Okay, so I have my photo here and there's just a few things we need to go through just to make sure your Photoshop file is set up correctly um, because it's very easy to run into act, uh, errors in actions if your Photoshop file is not set up well. So um, let's go through that. So firstly, look into your layer panel, okay? And your photo layer should look identical to this. Uh, it should say background and have this lock symbol. Now, if you've opened up a photo with a transparent background, um, it's most likely not going to look like that. It will look something like this. It'll just be called layer one or some other name, but it won't have background and have the lock symbol. So to set your photo layer as the background, just go to layer, new background from layer. Okay, that sets it up correctly. So you only need to do that if you open up your photo and it does not look like that. Okay, so next step is to uh, go to this top right hand corner icon here in the layer panel, click on that. Uh, it's hidden on my screen, but if you go down, if you scroll down to panel options, okay, um, and then right down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked, click OK. Next, go to image mode, make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits channel is selected, that's very important. Next, uh, make sure you're working with a high resolution photo. You can see mine's 2300 by 1700. Uh, I found the best results uh, with this action come around the range of about 1500 all up to about 4000 pixels. So try to stay within that range. It'll still work on lower resolution photos, but the results won't turn out as good. So, okay, that's that. Uh, all right, so what we need to do now is make a selection around our subject, okay? And we need to do this on a new layer. But what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna create my selection. So uh, I'm just gonna grab my one tool out. And because my subject's fairly, you know, contrast against the white background here, I should be able to just click, click around here and make a selection, okay? Now, um, if I fill that selection in now, it's gonna fill everything else but my subject. So I need to invert that selection. So Control shift i or Command shift i that'll uh, invert the selection. Now what I need to do is create a new layer. So go to layer, new layer, and the layer must be called brush, all in lowercase, okay? So if it's not spout um, identically to that, then the action won't work at all. So I've got my brush layer. So what I need to do now is fill my selection on the brush layer. So I'm just gonna hold down um, Alt Delete or Option Delete, it'll fill my selection in with my foreground color, which is black. You can fill your subject in with any color, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, it hasn't done a perfect job, so I'm just gonna zoom in here. I'm just gonna grab my pen tool, and I'm just gonna just quickly fill in these other areas. Okay, uh, what's going on here? It's a tennis racket.
the selection doesn't need to be perfect, just um, something fairly close. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so I've got my brush layer, I've got my selection on it, that's all good. So what we need to do now is load the actions panel. So go to Window, Actions, it'll show up over here. Uh, go to this icon here, top right hand corner, and select Load Actions. Select the fracture.atn file, and there it is there. Uh, so now what we need to do is load up the brushes that were included in the download. Uh, whenever you see brushes included in one of my action files, they must be loaded before playing the action. Okay, so just hit B anywhere over the canvas here. Um, we'll just hide this for a second. Hit B and right click. That'll bring up the brushes panel. So to load up the brushes, you just go to this icon here. And go to load brushes. And select the fracture brushes.abr file. Okay. Um, I might just do that again. I might just replace all these brushes. So I'm just going to go do that again. I'm going to go to replace. Okay. So there they are. So you can either go to load or replace, doesn't matter, either one. Okay, so they're all ready to go. Um, and before playing the action, make sure the brush opacity is at 100%. So just hit B again, and look up the top here. Make sure that's at 100%, okay? Um, you'll run into errors if the opacity is quite low. Okay, it'll say something like, warning no pixels were selected, uh, or you get some strange errors, so it must be 100%. Okay, we are all ready to go now, so um, and another good thing to do uh, before running action is just to purge your history. So you go to edit, purge all. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's just a good habit to get into before playing in action. Um, okay, so let's load up the actions panel again. Now the one you want to play uh, is Fracture. Now these other two, I'll explain what they do uh, when we get to the results um, of the Fracture action. So I'm just going to click play. Uh, and the action is going to take about a minute, minute and a half to complete. So I'm just going to uh, fast forward the video and get to the result. Okay, the action's finished playing back. It took about a minute and a half to complete. So I'm just going to um, collapse the actions panel now. I'll come back to these other two actions. Um, but firstly, I'll go down through all the layers and I'll talk to you about what they actually do. So I'll just um, collapse that. Now, the first thing you want to do is uh, collapse all these folders that are open, just so that everything's much neater. So to do that quickly, you just hold down Control alt or Command Option on the Mac, click on the um, Fracture Folder arrow here, and that just collapses everything. Okay, so I have left the brush layer on at the top. Uh, so if you want to run the action again, just select the Fracture Folder, delete it, and then you're ready to go. So what I like to do uh, with this action, because every time we run the action, all of these graphic elements, uh, they're randomized. So all the textures, uh, their rotation, their position, it'll all be different. So it's worth you know running the action three or four times, saving out each PSD file as you go, and then just compare them all at the end and see which sort of default result you like the best. Um, but we can go in and move all the layers around anyway, so it's no big deal. Um, so we go, we'll get into that now. So we'll get down from the top. Um, lighting correction, you really don't need to do anything with. It just uh, balances out the shadows a bit better. Um, just adds a little bit of brightness to the shadows. Hue and saturation we'll come back to, but if you just double click on this, you can play around with the overall saturation um, of the design. Uh, you can play around with the hue, which will just quickly randomize the colors. Now you'll see that the, uh, the colors don't cross too far into our subject, just around the edges. So you can see as I move that around, um, it's not passing completely into our subject. And that is, uh, let's reset that. That's basically done through the mask here. So you can see the area in gray is where I'm sort of prohibiting this, um, this adjustment layer from entering. So if you want it to affect the entire design, just hold down shift, that'll disable the mask. Shift and click on it. And then when you do that, it randomizes the colors completely. You can click on colorize as well. So if you want the design just to be one color, um, you can do it that way. Okay. Um, let's reset that. 
Okay, so yeah, we'll come back to that one again. Um, overall contrast uh, in brackets opacity. So whenever I've got a layer uh, where it has in brackets opacity, I'm telling you to um, adjust this layer's opacity because that's how it affects the design. So currently the opacity is at 70%. So if I just click, hold and drag to left and right on that word opacity, that's just adjusting um, the contrast of the design. So by default it's 70, if you bring it to zero, you can see it brings out a lot more um, details, a lot, lot more of those textures, uh, but you might like it up really high, so it crushes those details in, makes things look a little bit sharper. Um, but yeah, 70 is the default there, so mess around with that one. Um, adjust colors I will come back to in a sec. They basically work after you have played around with these two folders here. Okay, now this folder here, uh, split color, color toning. <coughs> What you want to do, if you go inside this folder, basically we've got a right side color and a left side color. And if you double click on these boxes, you can actually change the color. Um, you know, for example, this is the right side color, so the color over the right side of the design. Okay, and same to the left. All right. Uh, just by default, they're the two colors that I've applied: a blue to the left and a gray to the right. And uh, the way I've set this up is that this gradient will be split um, down the middle of where you have brushed, okay, your subject. So right in the middle here is where the two gradients will sort of um, cross over. Oops, turn that off. Okay, so you can see that through the mask there. All right, so you want to play around with those two. Uh, what I might do, I might just edit this as I go. So I'll just, um, let's get a... Let's get an orange happening. Uh, this side, I think I might just leave grey. No, I won't. I'll change it to a little bit of a yellow. Something like that. Okay. Now, adjust color. Oh, so I'll come back to that in a sec. I'll go into color variance folder. So if you go inside here, um, I'll set up 10 uh, different curves adjustment layers. And basically, on each one of these is a different color look. So you just go down the line here and you turn the eye on and off for that layer and it'll apply a slightly different um, color preset. So I'm just going to just quickly scan through these and think of which one um, suits the design the best. Might just keep it at the default one, color variance one. Um, you can also combine you know, multiple um, layers together, so you can have number one on, you know, I could turn on number eight, nine or ten, whatever, uh, and you don't need to use them at 100%, so, you know, color variance one, I could set that opacity to say 50%, so I could turn on number ten, I could set that, uh, set that to say 70%, so then you create a blend between the two, okay? Um, so that's that. I've got so adjust colors is when you've you know you've set up the two colors in here, these two folders. Um, and just a quick tip: if you don't want any split color toning, just turn off the folder, um, the visibility for that folder, and then it just sort of um, takes the original colors of your photo and sort of bleeds them out a bit. Okay. So adjust colors. Just double click on this one, and you just play around with these handles here, and it's just really to fine tune. Uh, the colors of it. So, um, just play over this, and then you can go from the mid tones. You can jump into the shadows, so you can sort of recolor the shadows a bit. You can go into the highlights. Yeah, something like that. Okay, now this layer here, reveal normal photo. Uh, this layer is really important and it's probably the one layer you want to jump to straight away as soon as the action's finished. Okay, so what you'll notice is that there's a lot of lines and textures over my subject's face and it's really distorted in the face a lot. So I want to clear that area up. I want his face to be really visible 
I uh, want it to be like the focal point of my design. So the way to reveal that is through the mask. So if currently, if, currently if I just turn this um, layer on and off, okay, it does nothing. It's because the mask is hiding our layer. It's all black. So if I um, disable this mask, if I hold down shift and click on the mask, okay, it reveals the layer. Um, and all that is, is just a cutout of our brush, our selection, and I've put it on top of all the other textures, so whatever we brush into that mask will override all the textures. Okay, so if I just hit B, right click, I grab my soft brush here, there'll be a nice, uh, there'll be a soft brush in the top left hand corner of the brushes that you've loaded, so you can quickly access that. Um, you want to brush white, so select the mask, okay, select the mask, grab a white brush and start brushing, and all that's doing is just revealing that layer. If I uh, hit X to flip to black and start brushing it, it removes it again. So white, I'm just going to brush a little bit over his face so it's nice and visible. Don't really care about ev everywhere else, I want that to look, um, you know, I want to have a lot of textures and detail, but the face I want to be clear. Okay, so going on down, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we have particles folder. If I turn this on and off, you can see it's just those little bits and pieces that fly out from our subject. Um, not much to that, you go inside the folder here, you have large blurred particles, so this, these are the particles, uh, well this, this result hasn't generated many, but um, if I move them around, they are just the particles sort of blurred out, so it makes it look like they're closer to the camera. Um, and you've got particles in different corners of the subject, you've got bottom, left, top and right, and particles just generally around the, the subject. So if you want more particles, you can select the folder, <coughs> uh, hit Control J or Command J, that'll duplicate the particles. You'll see by doing that as well, it makes them a bit more prominent. Okay, uh, I don't mind it with uh, being a bit stronger like that. And if you want the folder just onto one layer, so you don't want um, all these layers here, just hit Control or Command E, that'll flatten it onto one layer. So you can move that around if you want more particles. Um, okay, so it's that. Now cuts, uh, if I turn that folder on and off, so there are those thin thin lines um, that are around your subject. Now every time you run the action, the rotation, the position of these lines will be different. Okay, So that's one reason why I like to run the action a couple of times because it's I like to um, experiment with how <coughs> these lines are created. But if you go inside here, just a couple of layers, we have small cuts. So these ones here, if I turn them on and off, if you look around his arm here, they're just little lines that sort of come out from the subject. Okay, and then you got large cuts, they're the big lines. All right, uh, and you got this layer here called large cuts, single color. So the large cuts currently take the colors from your subject, okay, and they apply, they apply them in those lines, but if you turn the visibility on for this layer, it applies a single color. <coughs> So if you just double click on this box, uh, you know you can use this eye, you can use this dropper tool and um, select a color from your design. So I could pick some of these oranges. So that doesn't look too bad. So that's if you want to apply a single color. If you turn it off, it reverts back to colors from your subject. Um, you know, again, you can just hit Control or Command T um, and manipulate these layers. Just rotate it. Okay. Uh, you could duplicate it. If I hold down Alt to Option, click on this layer and drag down, that makes a copy. All right, so I can move them out to the side here. Another thing I like to do is, you know, as I'm moving around, I might not want to use all of these lines. Say, um, I just want this little area here. I don't want everything else. What I do is I um, select the mask, okay? I hold down Control or Command I, and I'll invert it. So now the mask is black. And so now if I grab my white brush, I'll hit B, uh, grab my soft brush, uh, and if I start brushing into that mask, I can start revealing a little bit of that layer, okay? So if I hold down shift to hide it, so rather than using everything, I've just focused this one little area, uh, so if I move that around. Uh, now if you want to bring this, this single color layer down with this layer, okay, just hold down uh, Alt or Option, click and drag on it, Okay, and now it'll bring it above 
our layer. And if you hold down Alt or Option between the two layers, you'll see that white box with the arrow up here. Click that and it'll clip it to the layer below. So only it will only affect this layer below. So if I now turn this on, you'll see that it's applied a single color uh, to our new layer that we created. So if I move that around, you'll see it's just got that one color. Uh, that's looking good, so I'm going to leave that. All right, uh, photo visibility one, uh, in brackets, brush mask. So basically, what I like to do with this layer is, basically, when the action's finished playing back, I go to this layer and I turn it on and off. So when I turn it off, you'll see that um, it's brought out a lot more lines in the design. Uh, it's you know it's taken away a lot of the visibility of the original photo. Okay. And similarly to uh, how I use this layer here, okay, I like to brush on um, or brush away areas that I feel look better with the with the layer turned off. So, for example, I will flick it on and off, and I'm looking around my design, and I'm looking at this area here, thinking that looks really cool without, you know, with this layer turned off. So I'll grab, I'll go to the mask, I'll grab my um, black brush. I want to hide some of this layer, so hit B, um, hit X. To flip between black and white in your um, panel here, just hit X. So black's my active color now. So if I just start brushing here, I'm basically just hiding some of that layer. Um, if, it, if I hit X, switch back to white, I want to reveal that a little bit. So I'm going to turn the layer back off again and take another look around the design. This looks really cool through this area here. So I'm just going to blush brush black here. Again, I'll, t I'll just hide it. I'm looking around. Uh, maybe the racket. I'll just brush that away a bit. Um, and maybe just a bit here. Okay, so that's looking cool. So if I just hide this mask, that shows how it was originally. And just with a little bit of work, you just add these extra little bit of cool details that really enhance the design. So spend a, a moment there. Now, photo lines are used in a similar way. If I turn it off, okay, you'll see that it removes all the lines and, and creates a totally different look. Um, I find that you know some photos really suit without the lines, um, and some don't. So you've really just got to jump this folder, turn it on and off, and see what if it looks better or not, and again use it in a way that I've used this, use the mask. So if I turn that off, you may be thinking, um, you know, this part of the arm looks better without any lines, so I'll select the mask, grab my black brush, and start brushing that away. Okay, but I think it's looking pretty cool. And if you go inside this folder here, um, there's a couple of layers again. So offset lines uh, is that one there, and basically, um, it finds the outlines or the edges of your design and creates line work out of it. And with this one here, I've called it offset lines because I've added a bit of, dis uh, I've distorted the lines a bit so you can see um, how this line here goes off his arm. So it's slightly distorted. So um, yeah, that's what that layer does. You can see in the tennis racket here, how the handle sort of been distorted a bit there. It's just for effect, um, again, Every layer and folder has a mask, so you can control its visibility. So say I've, if I didn't want this bit of detail in the racket, select the mask, grab my black brush, brush it away. Okay, and that's the end of that. Now, this one here, normal lines, this one will not distort. It will just trace around the edges. Okay, and if you want to apply a single color to it, just turn this layer on. And that will just yeah, apply a single color to the outlines. You double click in this box, you can have all white lines. Um, you know, orange lines. I might actually keep. Uh, might go for orange lines in this design. Yeah, and again, you can use the mask on these layers here. So, say, you know, I want, you know, his um, upper body here to have the um, orange lines, but the racket I want to be white. So, I'll just select the mask and brush that away. Okay. Again, if you want the lines to be more prominent, duplicate the entire folder, and you'll see that boosts it up uh, quite a lot more. So, photo visibility two, um, similar to this one here. Just turn it off, 
and ask yourself, do any areas of my design look better with it off? Or, you know, maybe this middle, this bit through the middle, you're thinking, yeah, that looks pretty cool. So I'll just grab the mask and brush black to remove it. And that's that. So these two layers sort of work in a similar way. Just turn them on and off. And then use the mask to control where you want them to appear and not appear. Um, this layer here, use grid edges. Just by default, I've got it turned off. If you turn it on, all it does, it uh, goes around the edges of the subject and applies kind of like a, a grid effect. Um, you know, if you like that, turn it on. If you don't, just leave it. Fractal textures, uh, if I turn that folder on and off, so you see uh, how that's affecting the design. Around the edges of your subject, I've just applied a few different um, fractal textures. One, two, three, and four. Um, you can, of course, just you know, move them around. Uh, you can duplicate, duplicate them, reposition them, uh, whatever you want to do there. Clouds texture, uh, if I turn it on and off, you see what that does. Um, there's two folders here, I've got clouds one in a folder. Okay. Now if you've run the action and you're thinking that some areas are just too cluttered with textures and you know, it's just too much, it's usually because of the clouds texture folder. It's applied clouds, um, too many clouds to one particular area. So just go inside here and turn the layers or folders off or just select the cloud textures folder and you know, drop the opacity down a bit. So for this design, you know, it's a little bit too strong, so I'm just going to lower that down to about 60%. Uh, if you want to apply a color, just turn that um, color uh, clouds to color layer on. And I've got a blue here, it's gone a bit greenish, it's because we've applied color variance um, layers here, so it's, that's affecting the color. So I'm just going to turn that off. Okay. Edge grudge edge grunge texture opacity so if I turn that on and off so similar to clouds um, that'll go around the edges of your subject and apply a grungy texture and it'll also take the colors of your subject and sort of spread that out through the texture um, if it's too strong turn it off and again you can just lower the opacity because um, I've got in brackets here opacity okay just a reminder to you know you can turn that down um, so I'm just going to get that about 55%. Wave textures, these are just some additional um, wavy sort of fractal textures that I've had to put down here. Um, so that's wave texture one. Uh, wave texture two are these, these little wavy lines here. All right, <coughs> excuse me. Now, photo edge glow is actually quite important. Like, if you want to turn that off, it hides a lot of detail around the edges of your subject. So, if I turn it on, it brings it out. Um, and if I zoom out here, you can, you know, hit Control or Command T to scale that up, and it will reveal a lot more detail. Um, I might actually bring that up just a little bit. Okay, uh, again, check out the opacity. If the details around the edges of your subject are too strong, like that is, I've brought that up to 100%, I'll just drag that down. Somewhere about there. Um, and background color, you can just double click on this and um, experiment with different background colors. Now, um, I'll jump back into the actions panel because I want to show you this, this um, action here. This is the part that really completes, uh, my opinion, the design. Uh, it smooths out all your, um, all your entire design using the oil paint filter. So filter, uh, stylized oil paint. Now the oil paint filter is only available in CS6 and above. So the action will work to, the, to this point um, from you know CS3 to the latest version of Photoshop, okay. But for this next step, uh, for the smooth design, you need CS6 and above. So all you need to do here is click play. It should only take a couple seconds, and you can see what it's done. It's it has smoothed out all of our um, design, and it's given a really unique look. So 
I'm just going to I'll just collapse that for a sec. So what it's done is created two layers at the top here, above everything else. Now, um, if I start moving, you know, say the particles around, now it does nothing. It's because it's put a snapshot of our entire design here on one layer. So that's why I only recommend running the um, smooth design action when you've finished playing around with all the layers. Okay, it's like a finishing touch. So if I turn these two layers off, you'll see there is our original, and that is with the smooth. So I'll zoom in a bit here. So you can see yeah, it applies like an oil painting effect over all our elements. So I'll turn it off. So that's before, and that's with it on. So it's a really neat little effect. And I think it suits this um, action really well. Now, uh, what I like to do is sometimes the oil paint filter, you know, creates strange distortions around, particularly people's faces, you know, distort the eyes or nose or mouth a little bit. So that's why I've created masks on these layers. So um, it does, hasn't turned it too bad on this guy's face, but generally as I was testing out on, you know, heaps of other photos, I found that I like to just brush away the oil paint effects on their face. So I'll grab my brush and I'll brush black into the mask. And that's just revealing the oil paint effect. Um, and this layer here, add sharpening. If I turn it on and off, you can see it really um, brings out a lot of the details in our textures. And I'll just brush away um, the sharpening on the face as well. Okay. So, you know, what I like to do, generally what I like to do is, um, you know, like I said, run the smooth design effect when you're happy with what you got. Um, but I like to always keep jumping back into layers and experimenting. So I'll just, so for example, I've run that um, smooth design, I'll delete those two layers. So I wanna go back into editing. So they're gone, you know, I can, you know, you know say I want a single color for the cuts here, okay? Um, say I want no particles, you know? So now uh, I wanna check that out with the smooth design. So I'll just play it. And then you've got the updated design with everything smooth. All right. Now, one thing to note about um, how I've set this layer up as well is that its blend mode is set to luminosity. So the only things that you can really change below here are the color. Okay. So, for, so for example, if I go into color variance and I'll turn these two off, you'll see that I can still affect um, the design through the color. All right, so you can like go and you can turn that one on. You can go into split color toning, and I can change this to a blue. All right, but um, yeah, what the only thing that doesn't work is when you start moving around the position of um, you see as I move them around, it's just messing up the color. Okay, so if you smooth the design, all you can really edit down the bottom here is the color. All right. So let me just, I'll hide that for a sec. Um, let's compare this against the original. I'll just group all that. So there's our original photo. And that uh, is the fracture action. Now uh, there was, I'm just gonna delete this group. So this layer here, create transparent background. Um, now, if you want to export this design with a transparent background, it's best to run this action first before the smooth design. So if I just delete these two layers, okay, so I'll click on this. And so what that's done, it has um, removed the background and kept all the other design elements. So you can now, you know, export that as a PNG and drop that onto your, um, your other work. But when you've run that um, action, it creates just a single layer at the top here, designed with transparent background. So turn it on and off. Here it is there. Um, I've just kept the folder on below so you can make adjustments and then run the action again if you need to. Uh, but what I like to do is I run that one first and then I run the smooth design. And that will just smooth out um, your transparent image. So you can save that out again, okay? All right, so um, I'm gonna open up the next design now. I'm just gonna go through the motions again of editing the design, just so you start to get really familiar with, um, with, the, with the workflow. 
Okay, so I've got to open the next example now. Uh, I haven't done anything yet. I've just run the action and that's the result I got. So let's just jump straight into it. Uh, control or command, uh, sorry, control alt or command option, click on the folder arrow, that will collapse everything. Now, I want to jump to the reveal a normal photo uh, layer. I'm just going to brush uh, white into that mask. So sort of remove those details around his face. Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn off the split color tony for a second just to see what I've got. Um, I'm going to flick off the photo visibility layer to reveal the lines. Um, now all I'm doing here is just looking around the design, um, just checking out what areas look really cool with this layer off. And I reckon around his arms here, up the top, and his legs. So I'm just going to start, I'm going to select my black brush to hide this layer, select the mask, start brushing. Uh, start brushing away here, up the top here, uh, his legs, and his arm here, turn it back off again, uh, looking good. Now photo lines, I'm going to turn it off, I think this, this design looks pretty cool with all the lines on, so I'm going to keep them on. Check out photo visibility two. Kind of like what it's doing here with his lip. When I turn it off, I like to see these lines, these outlines here. I think that looks really cool. So I'm going to grab my black brush to hide this layer. Just going to brush there. Looking good. Don't think I don't need grid edges for this one. Uh, the fractal textures, I probably just leave. I'm going to jump to the colors because I want to start. Um, messing around with those. So what I might do first is turn off uh, the default color variance. I'm going to jump into the split color toning folder and I'm just going to try and get these colors right. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to color pick colors from his pants here. This sort of um, greenish color. And then maybe on the right side this yellow. like that. And so generally what I like to do after I've, um, I've set up the split color toning, I'll jump into the color variance then and I'll just you know turn these layers on and off and I'm just going to check out which one um, suits it. Probably number nine here, just adds a little bit to it. I'll check with number one on as well. I think just nine, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to jump to my adjust colors layer. I'm just gonna play around with these handles a bit. Highlights might add a little bit of yellow. Get the shadows. Um, okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so what else have we got? Let's check out the cuts. Generally, what I like to do when I jump to the cuts folder, I'll just quickly flick this layer on so it just gives me a better idea of where the cuts are. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Um, I'm just going to shift select these two layers. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and drag down. So I've just made a copy. I'm going to turn on the visibility for this layer so I can see what's going on. I'm going to move it around. I'm just going to create a couple more. I'm just looking at his arm here. I just want a couple more lines sort of shooting out. And I'm just going to grab, um, I'm just going to use that a greenish color like that. And I'm just going to now invert the mask. Okay, so I'm going to hide everything. I'm just going to brush on those couple lines. Just there. I'm going to adjust the color. It doesn't look right. Something like that. Um, again, I'm going to make another copy. Drag down. I'm going to fill this, um, this mask in white. So white is my foreground color. So if I hold down Alt, Delete, um, or Option, Delete, 
it'll fill the mask in the foreground color, which is white. So now I can, I'm just going to change this color so I can see what's going on. I'm going to move these lines around a bit more. Um, I'm just going to rotate it. Maybe his arm here. I'm just looking at his arm. I like the way these lines sort of shoot off from the arm. So, something like that. Now, let's check out without any color applied. I don't mind that. I like the green. I like these little, these few little white lines. Just check out what's going on. Uh, I'm going to brush away these, these few things up the top. Don't need them. Okay, that looks pretty nice, all yellow. Okay, and keep it like that. Now, uh, I've checked all these out. Okay, uh, cloud sections. Uh, I might just lower the opacity of this one down a bit. On the entire folder, I might just bring it down a fraction. Like that. Edge grudge texture. I think that looks okay. They look good. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to jump to the hue and saturation layer. Uh, I'm just going to double click on that and turn up the saturation a bit. And I'm just going to offset this hue a little bit just to check out uh, some different colors. Just going to offset it just a tiny little bit. Okay, I'm going to check out the contrast. I'm just going to adjust the opacity of this. Yeah, I think 70% is good for that one. Now, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is um, smooth out the design. Okay, so I'll select the smooth design, click play. And there we go. So that looks really sweet. So what, the face doesn't look too bad here. So I might just leave it as is. Um, I might just quickly jump back into the color variants. I'm just going to mark that one so I know which one worked well. Um, I'm just going to check out some of these other layers again, just to make sure that there's no better color option. That one's interesting, I might just mark that one. Don't mind that one. So generally when I've got three or you know however many that I'm interested in, I'll hold down control and click on them. So I've selected them. Oh sorry, I'll select these bottom two and I'll just drag them up to the top. So now I've got the three that I'm interested in. I just go down and turn them on one by one, turn them on and off. And all I'm doing is that I'm looking at the design and I'm just asking myself which one looks which one looks better. And I'm thinking this one here. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, so I'll leave that. Alright, so I'm done with this one. I'm just going to um, group everything. Shift select these, control G to group it. So there's our before. And there's the after. So I'll just... Whoops. So there we go. Okay. So I'll go ahead and open up the uh, last example now. Alright, so I've got to open the uh, last example. And again, I haven't done anything yet. I've just run the action and that's what I've got. So I'll collapse the actions panel. Uh, again, I'm just going to collapse the folders here. That's that. Um, just so quickly show you, that was the original photo. So a few changes to make here. Firstly, I am um, going to jump to the reveal normal photo mask. Um, because there's a few lines and stuff over his face I don't want. So I'm going to hit B, um, X to flip to my white brush. 
So I want to reveal this layer. Okay, so there we go. Um, okay, I'm just going to turn off the color variance for a second and the split color toning. I'll turn that off. I'll come back to that in a sec. Uh, what I want to check out first is these three layers. So I'm going to turn off the photo visibility. And I actually like it with it completely off. Um, I like what it's doing around here to his legs and all the lines to his jumper. Hand looks really cool. So I'm going to leave that off. So I'm going to turn off the lines. Maybe... I'm just looking at this area here around his knees. I'll turn it on and off. Kind of like... I might just select the mask. I'm going to grab my black brush. Whoops. To change the size of your brush, just use the left and right square brackets. So I'm going to grab a black brush here. Just, I didn't mind this area without the lines. I thought that would be better. Okay, I'm going to jump into here. I'm going to add a single color to these lines to see if it looks any better. Change these colors. Uh, I think I'll just leave it as is. Yeah, I'll keep it the same. Okay, uh, let's go into the split color turning folder. Let's check out some colors here. I've got blue and a red. Blue and a red. I generally like to pick colors off the subject so I can see, you know, there's the blue and the red are the prominent colors there. So I'll try and use those and spread them out through the, through the design. Okay, color variance, let's jump in here. Just gonna start from the bottom this time. these two bring them up to the top. I'm just going to pair them these three. What I might do is I'll turn on number two. I'm just going to use a little bit of it. I'm just going to try to blend these together. We've got a little bit 40% opacity on that one. Forty eight percent on that one. And I think that one's going to be a bit overkill. So I'll leave those two. I'm going to jump to the adjust just colors folder. Play around with these handles for a set. Okay, jump to the shadows. Okay, that'll do. Uh, I might come back to the colors in a sec. Okay, let's check out the cuts. Now, uh, what I might do, I'll leave those ones as is. I'm just gonna duplicate these, the cuts. I'm gonna turn this on so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna add, um, I'm just looking at this little this little streak here. I'm just going to add that one in. I'm just going to use a blue, so it looks like it's just coming off his hand a bit here. Oops. Uh, might check out this bit. I'm just going to rotate it. Invert the mask. I'm just going to brush on this little area like that. What about a red? Red, I think, looks a bit better. I'm going to duplicate that again. Um, I'm just going to disable this mask. What I might try to do here is I'm looking at his. Um, I know it's about or something. I'm just going to grab. I'm just going to try and extend that color out. So again, I'm just looking at this one little streak here. Okay, I might keep this area as well, it looks pretty cool. 
I'm going to fill this mask in black. Grab my white brush. I'm just going to brush. Whoops. I'm just going to select the mask. Brush that on. I didn't mind that area there. It's pretty cool. Okay. I'm just going to jump back into split color tonium. I'm just going to check this out all in blue. Now we'll keep the red. Okay. Looking good. Uh, let's keep going down. Photo visibility 2. Get that on. These cloud textures. So you can see the way I work here is that I just quickly go down the line and, and I'm just turning the layer on and off. And I'm just at first it gives me an idea of how that folder or layer is affecting the design. Okay. I'm just asking myself, you know, is it too strong? Um, can I lower the opacity down? I think I can uh, for this. Or what I might do is just use the mask. I'm going to grab my black brush to hide it. And it's just a little bit strong around these areas here. So I'm just going to brush away a little bit there. Uh, I'm just going to brush away this little bit here. Okay. Edge grunge texture, check that out. I think that looks fine. Wave textures look good. Edge guy, I'm just going to zoom out. I'm just going to scale this up just to check out if it looks better with the um, the colour spread out a bit more. And I think it does a bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, Check out the hue and saturation. And offset the colors a bit. Um, maybe it's a little bit like that. Okay, the contrast. looking good. Now, I think I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm just going to uh, run the smooth design. Check out what we've got. Alright, that's looking pretty cool. Let me just show you that, so you can see that a bit more clearly. Oops. Okay. Uh, let's check that out against the original. Whoops, so there's the before, here's the after. Um, I'm just going to delete this group. I'm just going to brush away this smoothing from his face a bit. In here. There we go. And we're done. So you can you see how you can just, you know, really. Uh, quickly create these really detailed looking photo uh, manipulations with this action. Um, it's just a matter of just going down these layers and folders and turning them on and off and just checking what areas of the design look better with it on or off, adjust layers, opacities, um, you know, just really just experiment and have fun, fun with it all. Uh, but a couple of important things. The first thing you want to do when you've run the action is jump to the reveal normal photo mask. Okay, the mask here. And you want to just brush white to reveal um, your subject's face or any other part of your photo that you want to, um, to be a real focal point. Um, just reveal through the mask there. And yeah, and to experiment with the particularly these three layers here, turn them on and off. And use the mask to control where you want them to appear and where you don't want them to appear. Uh, because, you know, a couple of minutes work here can make a really big difference to your um, designs and make them, make them look a lot more advanced and detailed. Okay, um, that is it. If you are stuck with the action, shoot me over an email. I'll assist where I can. Um, but if not, I'm sure we have a lot of fun um, creating some cool designs with this action.